Hey guys, welcome back to another Avid Max Fly Tying Tuesday. My name is Max and today we're going to be tying the Big Eyed Mouse. Uh, this is my favorite mouse pattern. Uh, you know, I kind of came up with it. Um, it's a play on Master Splinter, you know, it's got some other fly trends in there. Um, this fly though um, provides you the best hookups, in my opinion, uh, when you're fishing a mouse pattern. Um, and I'll kind of explain why throughout the video here. So in the vise, I got the Kona Extra Strong Stinger Hook. Um, it's the XSS in a size 2. Um, I like this hook. 2x strength, uh, wide gap, ultra sharp hook point, uh, carbon steel, and uh, you know it's, it's a strong hook and it uh, holds some big trout. So get it started. I got some ultra thread in the 210 in a gray. And I'm going to start my thread way down back off the eye and lay down a little thread base here. Snip out my tag, spin my bob bobbin a couple times, flatten it out, just make nice covering wraps down to about the barb. And make nice covering wraps there. Now I'm going to take a piece of velvet chenille in the small. This is the warm brown color. I think this is a pretty accurate um, you know, color for a little mouse tail. I'm going to tie that down. Same spot, just about even with the barb, right where the hook starts to bend. And now I've got some uh, fly foam add in here so this is the three mil um, I like the three mil because it has the the right properties of floatability uh, when I'm swimming this fly so I'm just gonna make one even cut hot dog style so to make this a little easier to tie in keep my scissors I'm gonna cut this at an angle towards one side just have it come to a point which is going to make it a little bit easier to tie down onto the hook shank. So I'm going to start with some loose wraps right where I started the chenille and I'm going to kind of mold the foam around the hook shank and tie that all the way down to the barb there. And I'll start tightening up my wraps, cause the other ones to loosen up but you're just going to cover them up so you need to worry about that and really snug it down. Make sure it stays right up against the chenille so there's clean transition from the tail into the body. And then going to take a little piece of the triangle that I cut out and I'll cut off one end of the triangle. So now I've got a little block and it's going towards the, the eye of the hook and I'm going to tie that down and that just adds a little bit more floatability underneath and uh, kind of cleans up the body so that when you're laying down the rabbit strip or the hide it it's more even got a little taper going down to the eye so once I got that kind of cleaned up uh, I can take a piece of my rabbit zonker so I'm using the Wopsy rabbit zonkers in the chinchilla color. Um, this when it gets wet is pretty accurate uh, representation of uh, the color of a drowned mouse or a mouse swimming in the water. So take my strip, make sure all my hairs are going back and I'm going to tie the tip in here. Make a couple of securing wraps, crank down on it pretty good and leave some space so that I can get all the hairs going back the same direction and I'm going to bring my thread all the way up to the naked part of the hook there and I'm going to start palmering around keep pulling my hairs back so I like the rabbit because it allows for a lot cleaner hookups um, because there's not as much material so when the trout comes up and actually eats the fly it's not, it pushes a little bit of water um, and it won't push uh, the fly away, away from the fish's mouth as easily as it's breaking the surface tension. 
Um, so like the Moorish mouse, uh, great mouse pattern, you know, swims great. Uh, but I think there's just too much material, um, which kind of, you know, disturbs um, the water a little too much and uh, the cleanliness of your hookups. So that's why I like the rabbit body. You know, it flows really nice in the water and uh, looks very realistic. So once I got that worked out, I'm gonna leave a bunch of room here by the eye. I'm gonna snip out my hide. And then I'm gonna work it back a little bit more, just leaving some space right behind the eye so that I can lay down some nice thread wraps. Uh, when I'm finishing off the fly and so that head kind of pops straight up which gives it a, a nice swimming motion as you wiggle the rod tip. If you've never fished a mouse, uh, keeping the rod tip up at like a 45 degree and then just moving your rod tip side to side as you like strip slowly really makes that mouse skitter across the top and uh, swim really well. So I'm going to part my my hair on top here and get that situated um, and then I'm going to drop some super glue on my thread wraps. So once that's pretty even, take my super glue here and lay that down right on top of the shank, right where my rabbit kind of meets the thread. And then I'm going to pull over my foam strip and hold that in place for a sec just to let that super glue soak in and then I'm going to kind of bend my foam around the shank and make two or three loose wraps and then I'm going to pull tight I'm going to repeat that process a couple times where I'm just snugging it down and back off the eye so that I have a nice you know, easy way to finish the fly. So I've got all that rabbit pulled back going the right direction. And now I can take my front piece of foam just like on the master splinter and I'm going to fold it back. So I'm going to leave a nice little head on there. Make sure that's even and I'm going to bite into the foam on top and a couple loose wraps and then I'm going to start snugging it down and that kind of pops the nose up uh, which is really what we're looking for when we're fishing this fly. So make some securing wraps with that. Make sure everything's even, the foam's even on top of the shank. You know, everything looks pretty symmetrical. And then I'm going to take some more super glue and I'm going to coat my thread. nice tight wraps burying that super glue into my foam there so this is really uh, you know builds resiliency in the fly um, it's pretty fun at the end of the day to see teeth marks all over the foam you know trout got those little razor teeth so you got a bunch of bite marks at the end of the day and then I'm just gonna do a quick whip finish right behind the eye of the hook so that's why I leave some space there so whip finish the fly make sure you're holding back the foam secure that down Snip out my thread. I'm going to take my scissors and I'm going to clean up my ears here. So I'm just going to make one even cut along the top and a nice straight line. So now I shorten that up. Thing looks pretty good. You kind of see how popped up you know the head is here. Uh, that's really, really what we're looking for when we're fishing it. So I'm going to take a little bit smaller pair of scissors here. I'm going to cut a straight line on the top of that foam to make my ears. Now I split my ears, got little ears on there, so 
This is like the master splinter right here. Um, and now I'm gonna pop on some big glow-in-the-dark eyes. So these are the fluorescent fly eyes. They're glow-in-the-dark, 6.35 millimeter. And uh, this just makes it a little bit easier to fish it in low light hours. You know, if you keep a little UV torch with you or a flashlight or something, you can hit the eyes and, you know, track the fly a little easier. So I'm gonna lay down a little bit of super glue and there is a little adhesive on the eyes but the super glue really makes sure that they stay on there especially casting it a bunch um, that's the other thing about this fly as soon as uh, it gets a little bit wet uh, casting this fly is very easy so got one eye on there come back on the other side get the other eye lay down a little bit of super glue and my other eye on there And uh, I'm going to take a lighter and I'm just going to barely hit the end of the chenille. Kind of gives it a nice little point on there, you can see. So, thanks for watching. Um, hope you added a couple of these to your box.